guys, welcome back to California Cooking. Today's show, so much fun because I'm taking you to a hot spot in West Hollywood. And the owner, Marissa Hermer, was an American living in London and thought LA needed a spot just like Olivetta. It is visually stunning and the food is impeccable. Then, Levi's been really into ramen lately, so I'm making my rendition of this Japanese noodle soup. And finally, Dana Devon is taking us to one of her favorite family restaurants, serving up the most amazing homemade pasta. First, in the city of Los Angeles, a new restaurant pops up every week, but Olivetta has made quite the splash in West Hollywood. It is a star-studded scene every night of the week, and it's nearly impossible to get a reservation because the food lives up to the hype. How are you guys? What a beautiful restaurant. Oh my gosh. You know what this restaurant is the kind of place where you walk in and you can tell it's gonna be fun. It's a goal. Yeah. We have fun here. Alabetta, where did the name come from? Matt and I, we my husband and I, we sort of we made it up. Really? really? It's sort of a marriage of we have a favorite restaurant in London called Olivetto. Okay. And on one summer, I think before children, we were traveling through the Greek islands and we found a taverna that we loved called, I think it was Olivet Tea. The name sort of takes me away on holiday yeah. um, somewhere, and somewhere in the Mediterranean, so. Now, executive chef, and you're kind of, you're the, the this all came out of your brain, Olivetta, and now you guys have combined forces. Yeah. How did you two meet? I mean, we met through our general manager, I think. Right, I think we were kind of lucky how it all happened, right. kind of one, Thing led to another, to another person. Oh, I know this person. Maybe he's available. It just yeah. so happens that, you know, she, You were she, available like, at the right time. Yeah. And then do you guys, when it comes to a menu, do you work closely? Do you just let Michael do his thing? I think we're really lucky in the sense that our vision's aligned mm. nice. so, so, so perfectly. That has really, I mean, so far been easy. But when you look around the room, it's got that lounge kind of feel, right? With the, the these pretty like velvet colored benches where you just feel like you could just hang. I feel more comfortable when there's a lot going on, and especially for a fun, fabulous, sexy restaurant like Olivetta, I think if it was a little bit too prim and proper, I would feel like I had to behave, and I don't want to behave. I want to let my hair down, I want to have too many tequilas, I want to have a great night. And so I think the design lends to that. It sort of makes you want to be a little fit loose and fancy free. I have to confess, I was a huge Ladies of London fan. So you were American, an American living in London. That's where you met your husband, yes. right? Uh, you had restaurants in London. Yes. And then now are you full-time back in the U.S. or what? We're full-time back in the U.S. Yeah. I mean, our children go to school here. Um, we have, this is our second restaurant mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, our first, the Drake on the Pacific Palisades, we opened over a year ago. The menu, you mentioned the, the feel of like Greek islands or Mediterranean, is that the vibe of the menu as well? Yeah, I mean, we just want to celebrate the best of, of all of it, the coastal European, specifically Italy, Greece, France, and Spain, but really with the California sensibility. What are we eating? Making that rye macaroni for sure, the bread, right? Yeah, the bronzino. I love the bronzino, it's the best you've ever had in the entire planet. Take it away. We're in the kitchen. You're gonna take it away. The neatest, tidiest kitchen in town. Oh, well. You. <laughs> thank you. What are we gonna do? So we're gonna make a crudite here, right? So the, yeah. what's the, everybody likes to eat, you know, crunchy fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. For me, I like the dip. Me I like, too. you know, if I, had a, if I had a big enough bottle of ranch dressing, I could eat a yeah. whole bag of carrots, yes, right? So yes, yes, I'm kind, with you. Same kind of thing. So you, you wanna make it? Please, you can make it. Okay. I can do it. So I we're gonna help. start, we're, we're very conscious here to, there, with the dips, everything is uh, vegan and gluten-free in this dish. Oh wow, okay. This is a little sour cream, it's a vegan sour cream. Well, oh, I was yeah. gonna say, really? Right. <laughs> I'm like, chef, I'm I don't like, want to burst your bubble. We're doing this vegan dish, here's two pounds of sour cream to start, okay? <laughs> so what we're doing is an interpretation of a, of a French onion dip, which oh. we all probably grew up on, right? Yes. So we used to have these holiday dinners um, where my mom would labor for days over all this food and then my Aunt Patty would show up with a bag of potato chips and a French onion Oh my onion gosh, dip. that sounds like go, my Aunt Patty. My mom would get so mad because all the kids would be like, yes, Aunt Patty's here. So some onion flakes, right? Okay, yep, no dehydrated onion. onion. Yep, okay. exactly, dehydrated. So you've done this before. Yeah. Okay. A little onion powder. Okay. A little bit of garlic powder. Mm-hmm. Your whole kitchen smells like garlic. You guys have a so, vat of garlic over there. We do, we just there. roasted, a, you know, like 10 pounds of it. Yeah. We use it in almost everything. Okay, what was that, pepper? Uh, celery seed. Oh, celery seed. Yep. Now we've yes. got some pepper. Thanks for reminding okay. me. A little pepper, salt, Yep. and parsley. So basically what you're Hired. telling me is this is like a healthy French onion dip. Exactly. 
which exactly could change our world, honestly. So then we make okay. a hummus that we have here Ooh. with that roasted garlic that you love so yes. much. And we're just gonna spoon this in there. Okay. Are you combining two dips right Two now? dips, double dipping. Oh. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> double double dipping. Dip yeah. Okay. Take your French onion dip that you've yeah. now mastered. Okay. Okay. Add, and do you just do a layer on top? Oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, all right. Yep. Can't mess oh it up. Oh my gosh. This is genius to have just two spread dips. that out, yeah. Like that? Yeah. How keep do you going. Feel? Keep More? going. Go. Well, it's, 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 apparently that's how you feel. You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. I'm good. Okay. Okay, last one. <laughs> there we go. Then we make what this is we call this a soil, kind of tongue in cheek soil, yeah. right? So at the end the idea is this looks like a little potted plant. Okay. This is olives and cashews. Ooh. We put a little bit of nutritional yeast. Yum. Okay, and we just sprinkle that on top. What a cool recipe. I mean it's simple it's yet different. And then you're just gonna Poke in some vegetables. The vegetables change. You I've never to, like, been so over... excited for cauliflower. Want to give me a hand? Yeah. Cool. All right, what for are we? For cauliflower. Yeah. So just we stick just stick it in? Yep. No, don't overthink it. Okay. I... This is so cute. Yeah, it's fun. You know, it's like. Oh my goodness. It's a good way to start off the meal, yeah. kind of snack while you're looking over the I menu. I love this. This is how I would eat my veggies. Now, this is Marissa's favorite. One up. I mean, I have everything as my favorite. Yeah. It's really hard, but um, I eat this a couple times a week. So I'd say, yeah, it's uh -huh. in the top 20. You said she orders this almost. A lot. A lot, yeah. A lot. But it looks, first of all, it looks simple, but beautiful. Very simple, a couple a couple little tricks we'll, yeah. go, we'll go through with okay. you, but ready to roll? Ready to roll. So this is a this is our arugula cashew pesto. Mm -hmm. Very kind of a take on it. Everyone's used to the traditional pesto of you know the Genovese pesto of garlic, raw garlic and basil and parmesan right. and pine nuts. So this is inspired by that, of course. But we just took a few um, little twists in it to make it a little like bit different. It. Kind yeah. of yeah, we like to do that a lot. Offer things to people that are super familiar to them. Yeah. Pesto, everyone's eaten their whole life, but give it to them in a way that maybe they've never tried before. Yeah. So. Although ice cubes, that that is there a trick here with the ice cube? What's that? A trick with the ice. It's from cubes. Marissa's tequila. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Toasted cashews, yeah. right? We toast them, so that gives the pesto like a, a really rich, right. sa nutty. Sa savory, nutty flavor, obviously. We use roasted garlic, the stuff you've been smelling okay. all morning. Basil, mm -hmm. okay? We do about uh, three to one arugula to basil. Yeah. A wild arugula. Parmesan cheese, and you can adjust the amounts as you like. Just a tiny bit of chili flake, which we use like black pepper around here and almost everything. Salt, good extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's it. And then what we'll do is we'll give it a little pulse, right? See where it's at. And then at this point, where a lot of times you would just add more oil because it's a little ah. thick. Now I'll throw in some ice cubes, right? Smart. And then when the ice cubes melt, it's gonna help it all emulsify. Might give it just a touch more. Maybe not, see? Yeah. So. Thank you, chef. I think we're good to go. That is delicious. Okay, how can we not start with the bread? Tear it up. I would tear it up and dip it in whatever's closest to you. Yeah, we toast it in a pan. We toast it in, a, in olive oil, really good olive oil. And then we finish it with butter, garlic, shallots, a ton of herbs. So the butter picks up the flavor of the, that garlic and herbs and then infuses into the bread. <laughs> Tequila and bread, you're right. <laughs> and I would imagine if you come here and you order this, you will definitely order this every time. As I have a moment, We'll talk about, okay, there's our cute appetizer we made. Right, you made. You're hired, by the way. Do you want to talk? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put you on the line. Yeah. See, I would eat too much of the uh, the product. Mmm. That is so good. The vegan sour cream. You would not know. Should we talk about the branzino? Simply grilled. We put just uh, good olive oil and fresh herbs on top. Yeah. And then we have a little of what we call a lemon conserva, which is basically lemon zest and Lemon segments just simmered in their own juice. It's got that little hint of like sweetness from the lemon that's so delicious. And this pasta. So it's rye macaroni, a fennel sausage, my favorite ingredient. Yeah. Black kale. Yeah. Or also like a sausage pizza. Yeah. You get a little bit of that, right? It's familiar flavors. And I love that base, the cream base. You guys, this is all so good. Congratulations on Thank you. the success of this place. I can't wait to come back. If I can get a table. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know somebody, so. That bread is one of the best things I've ever tasted. The Branzino and the pasta, so good. Plus, it is the most beautiful restaurant I've been to in a long time. To get that vegetable crudite and arugula pesto recipe that would be good on any pasta, you can follow us on Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. 
Coming up, instead of cooking a few times a week, Dana Devon chooses to take her family to Osteria Mama. She'll show us why. Plus, I'm making my version of ramen. Comes together in no time, but we'll leave I like it. We'll find out. Levi used to ask for Caesar salad every night for dinner, then it was meat, and now it's ramen. So I tried my hand at the Japanese noodle soup. Let's see how it turned out. So the other night for dinner, I stumbled upon something that has now become a hit in our household, and it's ramen, of all things. I don't know how to make ramen. The authentic way, obviously. And everybody is familiar with the ramen noodles in the packet with the seasoning packet, which I didn't want to do because I know how much salt is in that seasoning packet. So basically how it evolved at home is I had a bunch of leftover tri-tip. And I thought, what am I gonna do with this? I had some beef broth, I had some pasta, lots of veggies, some seasonings. And it was my take on ramen. And my husband and Levi, they loved it. And now, almost every night, Levi goes, Mom, can you make that soup again? So, I'm gonna make it, it's evolved. This recipe keeps evolving. But what's great about it is it's full of veggies and it's yummy. Another thing that I put on there, I happened to have cabbage in the fridge that night that was already seasoned with vinegar from the night before, something we ate. Put that on top. So I'm gonna make that now. I'm gonna cut up some white cabbage. This adds a really nice crunch to the soup. And I'm just going to, it's better if you were to let this sit overnight, but if you can't, just a few minutes will, will be good. I'm going to, you can do white vinegar or rice wine vinegar. And this is seasoned rice vinegar. And what you wanna do is season and soften this cabbage. So vinegar will do that. Let that sit and we'll move on to cutting up our veggies. So again, this soup, any veggie you're into, I'm gonna do some red pepper, because it's what I had, and some carrot. And you wanna cut things small enough where it's not gonna be awkward to eat it in the soup. This is my favorite way of cooking, is making stuff up when I have not, you know, I don't know what I'm doing for dinner and I just look around and see what I can come up with. That's my favorite way to cook. Following a recipe, not so much for me, but, and then it makes me so happy when I figure something out that they like some green onion to garnish. And then here's what I found at Whole Foods. So you could do the, the ramen packet that you find at every grocery store. I just omitted the seasoning packet and used the noodle. And then I found this, which I never discovered before, just individual packets of ramen. So that's an option. And the first night I made it, I didn't have ramen, so I just used thin spaghetti. I know that might be shocking to some people, but I, that's what I had. A few mushrooms, let's slice up our mushrooms. Thin slice, and I was gonna do a beef broth, uh, but then I decided let's go veggie on this, and I found a miso broth, which I think will be great. This again at Whole Foods, but if you can't find that, you could do a veggie broth, at, you could add some miso, you could omit it. Totally up to you, but since I found that, I thought let's do it, let's give it a try. And miso is derived from the soybean. To start our soup, some avocado oil, and I'm gonna grate in some ginger, fresh ginger, thick knob of ginger, which will probably give us about maybe a teaspoon, two cloves of garlic. So that's gonna get going on a low heat. You don't wanna burn the ginger or the garlic. So just get that warmed up where you can smell it. And right before it browns, but you start to smell it, is when we add in our broth. So we'll take our miso broth, and this is just a way to add flavor to a box broth. And then we'll stir that around. Put it on medium heat. And now we're gonna add our veggies. First, our carrots and our peppers, because that's gonna take a little bit longer to cook than the mushrooms. So add those into our broth. And then we'll just let that simmer until those start to get soft. Okay, you guys, this is, this is why sometimes you just stick with what you know. So when I initially made this, it was with beef broth. And then I saw the miso broth at Whole Foods. I go, oh, let me, let me try that. Because I know they use miso broth sometimes in ramen. I don't like it. It is fermented soybean and it tastes that way to me. So I'm cutting it with beef broth. 
but that's what you, you improvise when you cook. And I don't think Levi would go for the miso broth either. So now I know. Okay, I'm gonna cook my ramen noodles separately because I just don't want them to get mushy in the soup. So I'm gonna put them in a separate pot of water, three to four minutes and they're done. And our soup's almost done too. I'm gonna add our mushrooms in for the last minute or so. Soup is done. Just gonna let that simmer until the ramen is ready. Ramen is about done. It's been three minutes. Add it to my soup bowl. And this is why I liked it separately, so it doesn't keep overcooking in the broth. All right, over here, let's add our broth with all the veggies. This smells really good. Okay, we've got our hot soup. It smells so good. I'm gonna put some more green onion, and then I'm gonna add our cabbage that softened a little bit. It'll add some nice crunch to our soup. Sesame seeds, and then our cute little egg. Hopefully, it might be a little too soft. It looks like it might ooze, but that's okay. Some people like the ooze of the egg. Uh, for Levi, I wouldn't do the sriracha, but for me, definitely. And also a little toasted sesame oil on top. Voila! Our ramen full of veggies and some chopsticks to go with. I really liked how my ramen came together, but will Levi like it? Coming up, we'll find out. Plus, Dana Devon takes us to one of her favorite family restaurants serving up the most amazing homemade pasta. That's coming up next. Dana Devon admits she's not much of a home cook, but she loves a good home cooked meal. So her and her family go to this restaurant at least three times a week. Take a look. Hi Jess. There are some moms who like to cook dinner for their families five nights a week. That is definitely not me. As a matter of fact, my husband hides things from me in the oven. So we come here to this restaurant all the time. It's one of our absolute favorites. And I wanna take this opportunity to introduce you to my favorite brother and sister team, the co-owners of Osteria Mama. God, these pictures are so great. So I love that this restaurant is all about family and that one of the things that you use to decorate the restaurant is old pictures of family. These uh, are my aunt and uncle. Okay. My grandparents with me. That one actually is me and my little brother. You were holding your little brother. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Wow, you've got pictures from all the way back. So what was your point in, in putting up these pictures in the restaurant? Every recipe mama put on the menu, it's attached to our history. Mm -hmm. I mean, our story of the family. The majority of the dish we have in the menu, it has a story behind. That's yes. incredible. Awesome. That's the legacy, you know, we have with Mama, and we don't want to lose that. This is a funny thing. Is This is my favorite dish on the menu, but I can never say it. So how do you say the name? Garganelli. 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 The black olive, the caper, the fresh cherry tomato, and the rucola. The, all the ingredients are fresh, mm -hmm. mixing extra virgin oil is fantastic. And then, so this is on the menu all the time? All the time, yes. Tastes like those tomatoes were picked off the vine this afternoon. How long does it take to make that pasta? I mean, let's say an hour, more or less. But you know, we have so many different types of pasta that it's a few hours every morning. It's amazing. Monday through Saturday. It's so great that you guys do this here. Okay, now tell me about this dish. What is this? Our version of uh, chicken nuggets. Uh, right. Definitely healthier. It's a baked chicken, okay. you know, in uh, almond and fennel. So we serve it with mashed potatoes. And it's a recipe very, very old. It's, I mean, we're talking about really? re Renaissance. From the Renaissance in the Middle Ages. Oh my gosh, okay. Mmm, it's delicious. What do we have here? Bigoli, it's a, it's a noodle from our town. Uh, it's dated back 1624, 26. Okay. And it's been adopted in the town around Padua, so in the Veneto area, Northeast Italy. And it's a kind of unique of the area. I mean, you can't find it in Rome or Milan or Florence. It's Until like, you brought it to California. Correct, and our father makes every day. And what's on top of this? Uh, this is a duck ragu, also typical of the area where yeah. we come from. 
Mm. That might be my new favorite. Well, this is some home style cuisine. Right. So it's definitely fresher, healthier, what you, what you want to give to your kids. So we like to think about most of our customers are becoming part of the family for us. I know I am. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know I'm part of your family. So Jess, why would I ever cook when I have Osteria Mama so close to my home? You have got to try it because I absolutely promise you will love it. I can totally see why Dana and her family love that spot. It's so homey and delicious. Okay, on to Levi Likes It. He's really been into ramen lately, but will he like my rendition of ramen? I need to see you slurp it up. I can't reach it that high. Oh no, this is not good. How does it taste? I don't taste the noodle. They didn't taste anything. The noodles don't taste like anything. How does the soup taste? See if there's flavor in it. The was is what making the this hot. Mm -hmm. This is the longest one. This is the most fun soup ever. Yay, he liked it. He's really quite the food critic lately. He said my noodles have no flavor, but he still ate the whole bowl. Well, that's it for us. For more of my conversation with Marissa and Chef Michael of the newest hotspot, Olivetta, you can check out my California cooking podcast. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Longest noodle ever.